Let's look at one of the main applications for the Marvis theorem in terms of like exam style questions. So we know that the Marvis theorem tells us that if we've got cos theta plus i sine of theta to the power of n, it's like equivalent to cos of n theta plus i sine of n theta. Um, and what we're going to look at in this video is how to work out expressions for cos of n theta or sine of n theta or tan of n theta. So for example, we're going to start with cos of 3 theta and sine of 3 theta. Now, you may have already seen this in A-level maths. Like, if I said to find an expression for cos of 3 theta, one way we could approach it would be to write it as cos 2 theta plus theta, and then use the cos A plus B identity. We'd get cos 2 theta cos theta minus sine 2 theta sine theta. Then use the identity for cos 2 theta, the identity for sine 2 theta, and so on. Okay, but there's another way of us doing this, and this technique is really useful. Imagine if I was trying to evaluate like cos of 5 theta. If you try to split that up using the A level maths technique, it would become a real algebraic mess because we'd have to get an identity for cos 3 theta, we'd have to use A plus Bs, and then there's a much better way of doing it, which is what we're going to look at using this technique. All right, so let's start, if we get a question like this, we can realise that if I was asked to cause 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta, the Marvis theorem tells us that that's equivalent to cos theta plus i sine theta cubed. So in this question, we're being asked to find an expression for cos 3 theta. And what we can do is we can expand this bracket. And when we expand it, we're going to get real terms, we're going to get imaginary terms. But cos 3 theta is the real part of our expression. So that would be equivalent to the real part of this expansion. Similarly for sine 3 theta, That's the imaginary coefficient on this side. <coughs> on this side. So when we expand this out, we can compare sine 3 theta with the imaginary components for this expansion. Okay. So first thing we need to realise, if we're asked about cos of 3 theta or sine of 3 theta, we want to expand the bracket cubed. All right. So let's think about that expansion. Just think about Pascal's triangle, because it's much quicker for getting your coefficients. We're going to be using 1, 3, 3, 1, aren't we, when we expand this bracket cubed. So we're going to be getting cos cubed plus 3 cos squared i sine would be to the power 1. Remember how the expansion works, like these powers reduce, those powers increase. Plus 3 cos would now be to the power of 1. Brackets and bonds here. I sine is squared. And we'll finish with the coefficient of 1, which would be I sine cubed. Okay, so let's just tidy this up. Be careful with our powers. <coughs> okay, so this i to the power 1, so we've got plus 3 cos squared theta sine theta i. i squared would become minus 1, so this whole expression would be negative. And also real. And i cubed is minus i, so that would become minus sine cubed i okay so once we've got our expansion remember cos 3 theta is equivalent to like this expression here is exactly the same as this expression here it's just represented in a different way isn't it so this the real part of this expression is equivalent to the real part of this expression and the imaginary part is equivalent of sine 3 theta. 
Okay, so therefore, cos 3 theta would equal cos cubed minus 3 cos theta sine squared. And um, that's a check. So we it might be asked to express it in terms of cos theta, like basically it's a show question, this one, isn't it? But it might also be worded slightly differently. It might say express in terms of cos theta. So the last thing we can just do is replace sine squared with one minus cos squared. Last time's minus is a plus three cos times cos squared, so we've got four cos cubed minus three cos. All right, and very similar sine three theta. We could. Look at the imaginary coefficients, so three cos squared sine. Remember, you don't need the i, like it's just the coefficients that we compare on both sides. Minus sine cubed. We want this one in terms of sine thetas. So replace cos squared with one minus sine squared. And just tidy this up. So three times sine theta. Minus three sine cube theta. Minus sine cube theta. Okay. Let's do one more example. Uh, this one says express tan four theta in terms of tan theta. So obviously the first thing you need to realize that is that tan Four theta is equivalent to sine. Four theta divided by cos four theta. So really, what we're doing initially is we need to figure out well what's what's sine four theta and what's cos of four theta. So let's start by saying <coughs> cos four theta plus i sine four theta is equivalent to cos theta plus i sine theta raised to the power of 4, and we're going to have to raise a bracket to the power of 4. With a bit of practice, you'll get used to what these coefficients are, but it's going to be 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. <coughs> okay. I might struggle to fit this on the board, but let's see. So we've got cos to the power of 4, plus 4, cos cubed, i sine, the power one plus six cos squared i sine squared plus four cos i sine cubed and then we'll finish with i sine to the power four. Okay, let's tidy it up. Plus the power four. And plus four cos cubed sine i. I squared becomes minus one, so this is real and it's negative. Minus six cos squared sine squared. I cubed would become minus i. And then we've got four cos theta sine cubed. And i to the power four is one, positive one. So we've got this plus sine to the power four. Okay. So now again, <coughs> we can focus on the real path. Cos four theta is the same as this real path. And then sine four theta is the same as the imaginary coefficients. So we've got cos 
file four, man six, cos squared, sine squared, plus sine to the power four, and sine four theta. That'd be four. Cos cubed sine. Minus four cos sine cubed. Okay, now you've got to be a little careful sometimes with this because sometimes what people do when you you might have already done like this might be like a second part of a question like what you might have done in the in the first part of the question you might have worked out what sine four theta is, and obviously if we were doing sine four theta we'd have to be like replacing some of these terms potentially actually maybe not with this one but maybe it was sine five you, you then you, if, if you've written it all in terms of sine or all in terms of causes um, like we did on that last example um say for example if i'd have been asked about tan three theta you actually don't want to use it with just signs and causes you want to be able to answer this question you want to be using this form here see where we've got an expression with signs and causes, and signs and causes. If you're asked about tan, you want to use this form. You don't want to use the form with just signs and just causes. And you'll see why in a second. So we could say that tan four theta would be the same as four cos cubed sine. Minus four cos sine cubed, all divided by cos to the power four theta minus six plus squared theta sine squared plus sine to the power four. Okay, just stop for a second and think about like the questions asking me to express this in terms of tan theta. And um, while we've got it in this form, there's a trick that we can do, and it will express everything in terms of tan. So we, when we say tan theta, obviously we'll have tan squared, tan cubes, but we won't have any tan two thetas or anything like that. We want it in just, just in terms of tan theta. See if you can figure out what to do. Okay, so the trick, if you have spotted it, and don't worry if you haven't, is we essentially multiply the top and bottom by 1 over cos to the power 4 and remember obviously if, as long as we do the same thing to the top of our fraction and the same thing to the bottom of our fraction it's going to be an equivalent form isn't it so we multiply the top and bottom by 1 over cos to the 4 look what would happen when we do this if you multiply by that so if you divide that by cos to the power 4 You've got cos cubed on top, cos to the 4 on the bottom, that would be 4 sine over cos. Minus 4, okay, cos, if we, if we divide that by cos to the 4, we get sine cubed over cos cubed. Cos to the 4 divided by cos to the 4 is 1, minus 6. Cos squared divided by cos to the 4, so that would be sine squared divided by cos squared. And sine to the 4 divided by cos to the 4. And then we can obviously express it in terms of tan, which is what we were asked. So it would be 4 tan theta minus 4 tan cubed. All divided by 1 minus 6 tan squared. Plus times the four. Okay. So obviously we could be asked about times the five or sines the five, and and the, the expansions would get bigger. I think the most we'd be expected to do would be like tan five theta. I can't see them asking more than that in the exam. Um, or maybe if it was five theta, it'd probably only just say like cos of five theta, because that takes up quite a bit of time, doesn't it? But the key thing to remember on this is like what are we actually doing okay so we, we're being asked to find like cos of 
end theta. So if in the exam it, it mentions, like it might not mention the Marbus theorem, it might just say what's tan of 4 theta or what's sine of 3 theta. And we have to realise that, that this is the technique that we're going to use for this question. Alright, thank you guys.